This is a bit of a break from my usual content, but I wanted to share a story with you all about uh, the first uh, writing uh, controversy I ever attained for myself. So uh, this was back in uh, 2011, uh, seventh grade. I think I was about 13, 12 or 13 at the time. Um, my middle school had um, initiated this uh, Pathways program. Uh, Pathways were kind of like um, additional classes, like in place of normal classes. Um, that kind of did, um, they focused on subjects and topics of interest that were uh, outside the typical curriculum. Uh, there were some fun pathways like, uh, like you know, band and drama, those are the pathways, but there were also some uh, more practical pathways that were more relevant to our education that uh, were mandatory, such as an SAT prep pathway, a, uh, you know, a, a study habits pathway, that kind of thing. Um, you could sign up, and the ones that weren't mandatory, you could sign up for those. Um, I remember uh, I signed up for the creative writing pathway in 2011, and um, at the time I was, the, the, the kind of uh, urge to write was uh, starting to bud inside me, so I decided that the pathway would be the, uh, the best way to kind of uh, explore that passion. So on the first day of the pathway, I walk into class, and to my complete dismay, there's this teacher that I hate there who's running the class. <laughs> I don't want to name her, so let's just call her um, Miss Brunner, I guess. Um, the reason I didn't like Miss Brunner is um, because I've had previous pathways with her before. Um, and I think she used to be a kindergarten aide before she uh, moved on to teaching middle schoolers. And let me tell you, she did not make the transition well. Uh, she always, like, talked to us like we were, you know, four or five, even though we were, like, you know, preteens at the time. Uh, and her classes were, like, super rigid and, like, structured and, like, super, like, high-maintenance, uh, like, run by her. It was, like absolutely maddening. Uh, for example, I was in a, uh, I was in the, uh, the, the study habits, uh, no, I was, no, I'm sorry, I was in the, um, I was in the, uh, grammar, like, grammar pathway with her. I think that was mandatory, and, uh, she would, like, bring a cassette tape to play, like, uh, like, nursery rhymes that talked about all the different parts of speech. We were, like, sixth grade at the time. Uh, I remember I took the SAT prep uh, pathway, and um, she would always like she, she she would she would like painstakingly go over all the instructions with us, and she would say stupid things like, "Okay, uh, take your finger and and follow along the words as I'm reading them to you. That will help with better learning comprehension." Yeah, and she she sounded like that too. That didn't make things better. Um, I remember the music appreciation pathway. She was running that too. Um, she only showed us like old musicals from the 50s and tried to make us do the chicken dance. I mean, <laughs> um, I did not appreciate music from that one, that's for sure. Um, and for the record, it's not like I knew who was teaching these pathways. They just kind of gave us a topic and then they had to sign up for them or, you know, in, in, in other cases, they were mandatory. I had no idea that Ms. Brunner was teaching all these pathways. The other thing about her, she was just completely, like, she was the most, like, humorless, like, disciplinarian, like, of a teacher you could ever be. Like, you, like nothing ever deviated from her vision of how the class should be run. I mean, if you made a side comment, if you tried to engage in some banter, if you, you know, even, like, spoke out of turn once, even if it was funny, she would bark at you, she would give you a conduct point, and, like, just shut you down for, like, immediately. Uh, for the record, uh, conduct points were like, um, you, uh, you get five conduct points in a week, it's detention, uh, which made it super easy to get detention back in those days. I mean, think about it, uh, you know, uh, two conduct points for just, you know, you talked in class, uh, one conduct point because you forgot a piece of your uniform, most likely the tie, uh, and then maybe two conduct points later in the week because um, you talked during carpool when you weren't supposed to, uh, detention. I mean, is that really detention worthy to you? Do you really think like you deserve to stay after school and copy down uh, the uh, school manual for three hours because of that? <laughs> I mean, that's just a bad week for a kid, but I digress. So yeah, I was, when I walked into the creative writing pathway for the first time and I saw she was there, 
my first thought was, oh God, please do not kill the love of writing inside me, Ms. Brunner. Please do not do it. So, a side note, I think the reason like she was chosen or she chose to do the creative writing pathway was because uh, her husband um, was actually a published author. But he did nonfiction and he brought over copies of his book and it was like a uh, business advice book, which, you know, on one hand, you know, good for you, man. You published a book, you know, writing and publishing a book is super hard. I'll commend anyone who does it. But at the same time, a uh, business advice for seventh graders, not exactly the most winning combination. Anyway, so um, the, the class goes on about as I expect. Um, I just remember it not being as fun as I'd hoped. There wasn't as much like actual creative freedom as I was anticipating, which uh, kind of defeats the purpose of um, the creative writing pathway. But you know, with Ms. Brunner running, um, who knows what to expect. Uh, the, 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 the big opportunity, however, was the final project. And the final project was you were given a list of prompts, which, again, in retrospect, isn't exactly a, uh, the winning strategy for a uh, creative writing final, but whatever. At least I was able to write about something that I kind of wanted to do, which was on the list of prompts. Uh, and the, 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 uh, the, the kicker was is that the students would write a story based on a prompt and then the stories would be compiled into a book they would publish you know a few copies of the book and then they would hand it out to us at the end and that would be kind of like our memento from the class which i thought was actually super cool um one of the prompts was write about some dreams you had which i chose that one uh because um i've been having like messed up dreams my whole life so i thought that would be a uh, really fun to write about. And I mean messed up, I mean like super, super messed up. But that's another story. Um, so yeah, I write about, I take my part, I write like five or six dreams that I had in the last uh, few years. Um, one of them, one of the dreams uh, leaned on the more uh, absurd side. Um, I was on a desert island. Uh, I got rescued via helicopter. I was in the helicopter. We were um, flying out you know, away from the island, still uh, not too far away from the, from the water level of the ocean. And I remember someone left the door open to the helicopter and I volunteered to uh, close it. Now, I don't know what compelled me to do this, but I stepped outside the helicopter. This is a dream, remember. I stepped outside the helicopter. Um, again, like, dr dream me is kind of an idiot. I don't know what to say, <laughs> but... As, and as I'm trying to like, you know, reach for the door to close it, the propeller of the helicopter snags the collar of my shirt and flings me like a thousand feet in the air. And there's a point for like airborne objects where like um, the forces of upward moment momentum and downward gravity kind of uh, meet at like a zenith and you kind of freeze in midair. I was at that point where I just uh, had a split second to observe my surroundings in a frozen state. I look down at the ocean that's like pretty much at this point miles beneath me. And in the dream, I just said, oh shit. I started falling and naturally I wake up right before I hit the water. So I put that detail in my story. Um, I actually said, uh, oh shit. Like, like, like there's like a line break, oh shit, line break, um, the rest of the dream. <laughs> so I actually wrote that in there, like the actual expletive. Um, I thought it was funny. I, I, I just thought, it, I, I thought it was, like I, I, I was taking a risk I knew, but I did it anyway because I thought it was funny. So I turn it in, um, find out later that Miss Brunner read my story and went absolutely ballistic because I'd included a curse word in my story. Uh, she was just like, she thought it was completely inappropriate. She, she couldn't understand why I, uh, put a curse word in my creative writing story. And, um, she was threatening to give me detention and give me a zero for the final project. Like, I, let me just, like, take a moment to try and, like comprehend this. 
Um, I honestly forgot what I was going to say because it's just so stupid. Like, yeah, firstly, like, the first thing, firstly, I was, like, super worried. Like, I was indignant first, but I was also super worried because um, conduct was not my strongest subject. Um, so I was, like, a pretty good student back then, um, but conduct was always something I had to watch out for. I was always getting in trouble, and um, conduct points were, like... Um, they worked like a like a grade system. You started out with a hundred, and you uh, lost. Con and if you got in trouble, you lost conduct points, and your grade uh, could only get worse over the quarter or the semester. So I was already struggling pretty bad with conduct at certain points. Like I think like conduct was like one of few classes. Like I think it was like conduct and handwriting. Yeah, conduct and handwriting were the only two classes that I was ever in danger of like failing in. Uh, so super indignant, super worried. Um, I didn't know what to do, you know, obviously my parents got mad at me because I was being threatened with detention in a zero. Um, but um, what was amazing was the fact that while Ms. Brunner was freaking out and like mad at me behind the scenes for including a curse word in my creative writing prompt, uh, the English department actually stepped forward and rallied behind me, spearheaded by my... Uh, sixth grade English teacher. Her name was uh, Miss Crabtree. I'll, I'll name her because I actually like her a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, Miss Crabtree argued in favor of me, saying that, yes, he did include a curse word in his uh, school assignment, but it was, an it, it was an appropriate use of the curse word. It was funny. It was comical. It, you know, I wasn't like I was, it wasn't like I was cursing throughout the whole project. Um, you know, it's clear, that he, it's clear by the use of the curse word that he knew what, what it meant and what he was doing. So I think this is uh, this shows a great potential for a creative writer. So please do not like punish him so harshly for this because I have a feeling that if you I have a feeling that if you do punish him so harshly for this, then that's just gonna like um, put him off of writing for the rest of his life because this, this is such a crucial developmental period as both a a uh, young man and also a aspiring artist. So please do not do this to him. Uh, I, I have faith in him. You know I heard about that and like. These things, you don't appreciate them until, like, you're much older. Like, obviously, like, back then, in the moment, when I was young and uh, didn't know any better, I was, like, pretty scared. I thought I'd really, like, messed up. I thought that I was going to be in huge trouble, and I, d I didn't, like, think about the implications behind, like, what had happened. And, um, and like, like kind, of, kind of the inherent, like, injustice and indignity behind it. Because, let's face it, like giving someone a, a zero and a detention for something they did during a creative writing assignment, like, within reason, naturally. Like, I think that that is, like, one of, like, the stupidest and most, like, unfair things you could do as a teacher. I think that's, like, indicative of, like, a shortcoming in yourself as, like, an educator and, like, as a mentor for young people. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Thank God for Miss Crabtree. Thank God for the English department for rallying behind me and uh, going up against Miss Brunner. Like that was super based, super awesome. But um, ultimately, you know, teachers, instructors reserve the right to penalize as they please. Uh, you know, Miss Brunner was well within her rights to to punish me as she saw fit. Um, but eventually, they reached to a compromise, um, and that compromise was um, instead of a detention and a zero. Um, I would be given three conduct points and my story would not be published in that final book they made. I still got credit for the assignment though and I didn't get detention so I guess that's a good thing but the bad thing is is that I was denied my first opportunity to be uh, to find my name in print which was also sad. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the story of my first uh, writing uh, controversy. Um, that was the first time, um, as y'all probably know, it certainly wasn't the only time. And um, I'm kind of, sort of, not really hoping that I don't get any more writing controversies for the rest of my career. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's just a funny story I'd like to share with you all. There's, there's a good message behind it, I think. I think it's really, like, uh, it's really, like, indicative of the kind of person I became <laughs> later in life. So, um, yeah, there you go. I mean you like this story, I'll probably share more in the future. So um, take care, everyone.